a lot of things I can say here, and there are a lot of things I cannot say, because some of them are emotional to me, and I might share tears if I have to say it. So uh, some of your questions, I might not be able to answer them. But um, as Sinia said, um, I've also been through a lot. Uh, People see me say me yada da babi and a nami wa brochi and no mudi me ba national team. Me so far I woga na pa answer na me two kind. Na me papa nibi me mami nibi. We were living in a wooden house. Ah na me grandfather me great grandfather see ye. And a na ye timu. In siuto ah ne soni. Wood wood no. Na che olden days wood. The wood na bonti ka obi wo inside a wood me hono. Uh, I got the opportunity to travel. Tra the travel was not just uh, ordinary travel. I traveled to Dubai first. When I got the agent, now they call you no know, Ovanishie. So I had no one. Tino nami nam mi bag bombechi. My bag. I had my bag packed. I was. I always. I, I take a bus. Then. So me who stadium light uh, if I see a stadium light, na my my jra. Then I go inside the stadium and then I ask, I'm a footballer. Can I train with your team? Me say no, we don't do it that way yet. So me here yeah, example way because uh, there are a lot of fake agents around. Me start with that. There are a lot of fake agents around. They will lie to you. They will they, they will tell you sweet things. They will even ask you for money. No agent will ask you to pay your ticket to travel. Never. If a club needs you or a club wants you, they will send you an invitation. You will go to the embassy to get the visa, and they will pay for your ticket. So first one, he said, you shouldn't listen to fake agents. When I was in Dubai, I got stranded. When I was leaving Ghana, I had only $30 in my pocket. So I got there, stranded, nowhere to sleep. When I was in the park, I had DS Global, I DS Football at the time. It was Triangle, see, and I was in the park. So the other one said, I'm back, 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 I'm back. So, it was difficult, but you need to be strong mentally to be a football player. We go through a lot. Football is not easy. People, people always think football is just, oh, we just go to the field and kick the ball around, that's it, you know. No. There's a lot of things involved in football. So... <laughs> Some of the things I cannot say, I cannot say it here. Otherwise, uh, I will share it here. So, um, I think let's take the questions, please. Let's take the questions. We've heard about black magic, black magic, black magic. Oh, yes, indeed. Some of us believe it, it, it works in football. Some of us, we don't also believe because of our, I mean, our spiritual background. But then I, w I would want to ask from them, is it good? If it is good. Tell us why it's good. If it is not good, let us know so that we can advise ourselves. Okay. Um, look, uh, for me, I played football for 16 years in a good level. And uh, there's nothing like black magic. It doesn't exist in football. It doesn't exist. <laughs> if you are fit and you know what you are doing on the field and you know your position, you learn your position and you master your position. There's nothing like black magic. That's it. Yeah, of course. Of course. If you are fit, if you are a footballer and you are fit and you master your position, I, I said what? Master your position. Learn your position. There's nothing. That, that, that should be your black magic. Mastering your position is the magic. Thank you very much. You've played football for 16 years. What do you consider to be your greatest challenge? And how did you um, conquer it? 
Thank you very much. My fellow Ghanaians. Okay. Um, my greatest challenge was uh, breaking my leg. I broke my leg. Um, I was out of one year, five months without football. And uh, when I broke my leg, they told me I, uh, I can play after three months. So after two months, I had pain. I had pains. But I was pushing myself because they told me three months. So I was still limping and still pushing myself. Every day, I go with the physical trainer, limping. I had so much pain, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't open up to the physical trainer. And then the thing got worse. And not knowing it was a mistake, I was supposed to be out for seven months. And they told me three months because the club needed me back as soon as possible. And they knew me that I was a strong guy and I liked to work. So they wanted to push me. It was a mistake from both sides. I, I had to be open. So what I would say is when you have a knock and you have a pain, tell your coaches, coach, I have, a, I have pain. I cannot play. Maybe one day rest is enough and it will change a lot. I had pain. I didn't say it. And I, I, I should have stayed out for only seven months. It took me one year, five months. And it was a difficult moment in my life. Because seven months without football, I started going crazy. When I go to the stadium to watch football, now me tip time. So I stopped watching football. Fear. I was always angry at everybody. So we are at the Kitikiti Miko Stadium. We are at the Kitikiti Stadium. We are at the Everything was there. So who will knock? And I said, Bibia, tell your coaches, don't hide it. Because Ebo na Ujani, Ujani no ma say. But knock, Bibi ma u nai. I say, na afeti we chi. Na afeti u baby. Ubenya other injuries. Because one treatise are knock na unya u dia shell mu na udia bobo na. So chale. For me, my biggest challenge was the injury that I got. And I stayed out for one and a half years. But then uh, so it comes with strong mentality. They be me use our word with strong mentality. Every day, Nami wa gym. Every day. Every day. Every day. There's no day uh, Yamami time. Say me do training. Ten o'clock. I'm a late da. Never. Mimba holiday wagana. Mimba holiday wagana da my late akobagda. I always live one or two days. In advance. So even if I miss my flight today, tomorrow, I still have tomorrow. I know a lot of players who come late. And the moment you come late, once, who, who do one more late, the coach plans a woman, it's gone. It's gone. My colleague said, uh, when we finish the season, they take your weight. When you go back, they take your weight and they compare. If you get, if you do her no more, now say your weight is too much. Uh, you are dead. You are a dead man. You see the precision that you guys do here. It's nothing. You train three times a day. Seven o'clock in the morning, you're already running. Ten o'clock, you're already on the field. Three o'clock, you are there. So it's either you are a professional or you are not. And uh, if you are late or you come overweight, then your season is finished for you. So, Charlie, football demands a lot. It demands a lot. So, um, that's all I can say for now. So, let's... Okay. During your time, was there something like racism? <laughs> yeah. Racism, the, it, it exists. It's, it's, a, it's a disease that we are still fighting. For me, um, I started playing football in, in Sweden, and then I moved to Greece. In Greece, some of the villages, when we have FA Cups, black that. They've never seen a black. So if a black man is on the pitch and performing, uh, uh, it's strange, mom. It's strange. So they attack you verbally. 
we hear monkey chant. But for us, when we are playing, we don't think about that because we know we are alone. Me, I went to Sweden when I was 19 years old, living alone, nobody. After training, they drive me, or I take my bicycle, I go back to my apartment, stay there alone. The next day, I go back to training in the cold. So, so we are used to certain things. So when, 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 when we get the racism challenge, I think we are always prepared for it. We are fighting it, but it will take time. But I, I have also faced a lot of racism. And I, I think seniors time should be more at that time. Because I cry echo do on the moon, 2006, 2007. And the Omomu time, no dear. So, first of all, I want to ask, some of the experience you have from the coaches as a young players like you now, giving us a little experience. One, a player coming to the field as a coach, telling the player, you for you, you have to go and carry Pompo. I don't need you. I don't need you here. Uh -huh. And the second one is maybe going to different clubs, meeting different coaches. What are that kind of experiences? We this never discourage you, but yes, to keep pushing up that you do it. Um, I <laughs> <laughs> um, last time, I think we, we met the technical team, and uh, I made a comment that I had 19 coaches in my career from different parts of the world, and uh, I had problem with only one coach. Because he was every day blah 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 blah. He was he was a good coach. He was respected in, 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 in Belgium. But every day talking, talking, talking. Coach Bet Makacho said because Yak Pong but it's it coaches know some more emotions. And yet he says now who boot me for now who can't send me now regret, you know. The coaches also say things and they regret later. And so catch or say uh Yak Pong Kwa does he doesn't mean it. But our person push you, echo level will be. And you know, can say anything. And you be a coach, but can be a, and I will be a fan of personal. Player be a friend of NS Unal. NS Unal, or La Liga. Or a Turkish player, or La Liga. So I coach me, can say, I'm not going to say anything. He told the guy, say, you, you will never play anywhere. But the guy left Genk and went to La Liga. And he's still there and playing. So, when my coach be a idea of a cano and discourage you, is a person who is in the